I'm Dave. Um, I, we can have a conversation. It's a small room, um, but you can treat me like a, you know, a, a, a unidirectional resource if you prefer. Um, it's actually not my first time in Singapore. It's my second time in Singapore. But last time, I don't know, it was ages ago. So I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure everything has changed. All these buildings are probably new. Um, yeah. So uh, I mean, Michael introduced me. Anybody got any questions? Before I start, OK, great. Um, I don't know if, I was, um, if it was advertised what I would speak about. I'd, I'm not sure I even knew until I got here. Um, but what I, plan, <laughs> what I plan to do is show you some experiments I've been doing with um, Java templates. So templates for. It doesn't have to be for web pages, but I'm going to show you some web page examples. Um, so you're probably already familiar with some of these templating technologies, right, that are out there. So um, one that a lot of people use is Timeleaf. Anybody use Timeleaf? Yeah, it's quite common. I mean, if you look at the Pet Clinic, the vanilla Pet Clinic is made out of Timeleaf. And if we look at the Spring Boot source code, which I'm just doing here, um, then we'll see in the auto configuration, let's have a look in there. Mean Java stuff. So we'll see a few examples here. Is the font size okay for everyone? It's, I mean, I'm not asking you to read the contents or anything. Um, so there's Timeleaf here somewhere. There we go, Timeleaf has some auto configuration in Spring Boot. Um, what else is going to be there? Mustache was actually, it wasn't in the Spring Framework before, right? But Spring Boot introduced Mustache as a, a sort of uh, auto configured template. I did that. <laughs> and um, I'm proud of it. I, I quite like Mustache. Uh, there's um, Free Marker, uh, there's one, one of those here as well. That was always in Spring. I'm not speaking to this. Really? I, I can hear it really loud. I guess the problem is when I turn away from the yeah. microphone. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, it's really loud for me. It must be right behind me or something. I'm sorry. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, free marker um, was always in the Spring Framework. It's been there for years. Um, did we, have, we had Velocity as well in Spring Boot yeah. to start with, didn't we? Yeah, but I think Velocity was kind of discontinued by Apache, right? So it no longer exists. So we took it out of Spring Framework and we had to take it out of Spring Boot as well. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Josh has a question. Speak to the microphone. Uh, we're not judging you much, <laughs> but who's using JSP? As, oh, JSPs, I forgot to even <laughs> say. <laughs> Nobody. Who knows what is JSP? What? Who knows what is JSP? Who knows what JSPs are? Yeah, that would be great if somebody didn't, if nobody did. I unfortunately remember JSPs. Yeah. Uh, there's also groovy templates here. I'm not sure many people use those, but it's, it's another thing that's a, a feature of Spring Boot. So um, all of those things are, um, are widely or less widely used. Actually, I would, just before we move on from that, um, an example of using Mustache is... Um, actually, no, why, why don't I talk about what the common features are? Common features are um, you write a template, and then you... Um, render it by injecting a model, okay? Objects, Java objects get sort of mushed together with strings and out you get HTML or something out. Um, so uh, of the, the examples we talked about, JSP and Timeleaf in particular are very much about HTML generation. You don't really see them used for anything else. And you sort of can, but they don't, they don't like it if you want to use them for like email templates or um, you know, documentation or something like that. Whereas the others, other examples I talked about, FreeMarker, Mustache, the Groovy templates, they don't really care whether you're in the web, in a web application or not. So you can use them to generate text, general, general text. So I like that, right? That's one of the reasons I quite like Mustache. And as an example, I thought I'd just um, point out, if nobody knew this, um, Spring Rest Docs is a very useful and interesting project. It uses Mustache 
Um, so if you go in the source code for Spring REST docs, if you ever need to extend it, you'll find out about it quite quickly. But you can use Spring REST docs happily without knowing about the mustache templates. But they're here, right? So if you looked at um, all of these snippets, they're actually written in mustache. And that's the mustache um, syntax there for you, double, double braces. That's the mustache, like somebody's, you know, literally <laughs> on their face mustache. Um, so I just thought I'd give you that um, as an example and as a flavor of you know, what a template looks like. So this is going to render some markdown by the looks of it. It's a table in markdown rendering the parameters to uh, an HTTP endpoint. Parameters have a name and they have a description. And so this, this thing loops through all the parameters and printing out their name and description in a table. Neat, right, and useful. Um, so I talked about some of the similarities and, and differences with the existing tools that I've, I've mentioned in Spring Boot. Um, another thing they all share in common is that they are all basically runtime compilation steps. Right? They, um, you, you fire up an engine, template engine of some sort at runtime. It sucks in the strings. It parses them into some internal representation, and then it mushes them together with the model. It's a, I mean, I think JSPs technically they you can compile it, pre-compile them. Sometimes, sometimes people did, but they hardly ever did because really it's a, it's designed to be kind of a runtime um, compilation step. But um, in this day and age, Java 21 just came out. Um, GraalVM was mentioned, native compilation was mentioned. It strikes me we might want to think about um, a build time process, build time compilation of templates, both to improve performance and also to make them more accessible to native compilation. So you know with GraalVM, if you compile a native image, I don't know if Josh is going to have this on his um, list of things to show, but. Um, if you compile a native image, you have to teach it about all of the reflection that might happen inside your code. And these um, template engines that we've talked about, especially the runtime comp compilation ones, they're very susceptible to needing reflection because when they, you know, when you render this parameters thing here, it's going to be a Java bean getter, probably some object dot get parameters um, method call. So it's going to call that reflectively, isn't it? Um, which is OK, because Java supports reflection. But these days, we're all trying to look for faster and more efficient and more accessible to native compilation. <laughs> so it strikes me as worth looking for an, an option that, that is um, build time compilation and can therefore take into account um, you know the types and the um, the structures of the, of the data objects that you're going to use at runtime. So, I, I did some research, and this is what I came up with. You could find this. Um, so I'm going to switch the ID in a minute, but this um, this is where I've stashed the code. If you can't read that, I'm sorry, I can't increase the font size in the, at the top there. It's it's in GitHub a Desire Java template demo. And the way I structured it, there's a main branch, which is going to be using a tool called JTE. And so if you look at the readme, it mentions JTE. And I stole this code from the JTE project. I didn't even write it myself, but I'm just collecting it in a convenient place for you. So JTE is a, one of these um, build time compilation engines. And there are two other branches there. There's one called Rocker. And Rocker, so Rocker is another compile time template engine. I don't think it's Java only, but it's, it has a Java implementation at least anyway. And JStatio, I'm going to show you as well. So has anybody in the room ever used JTE, Rocker, or JStatio for anything? Great. So you're all going to be learning something new. That's fantastic. Um, 
Uh, and I think you know they all have um, some interesting things about them. But I'm going to say it before I start, uh, Joe Statio is my favourite, and it's the one that I've actually contributed a little bit to myself. Okay, so if you open up that project in an IDE, it'll look like this. This is on the main branch. Just check. Yep. And um, so I've got a Spring Boot application that um, it really just is a Spring Boot application, doesn't do anything. Um, there's a sign here already that I'm going to have to uh, do something special for native compilation. So I'm already adding input, uh, runtime hints. So that's a hint, but I won't cover that yet. Um, and it has a controller. So it's a normal web application. It's a very, very simple one. And like I said, this is somebody else's sample. I just stole it from the internet. Um, and so the main thing here is the home page is a get mapping. And as you can see, it returns a string called demo. And that's quite common. OK, in, in web applications, you're used to the MVC um, programming model, the paradigm that everybody uses in Spring. You return the name of the view, and then there's a view resolver in Spring that maps that into an actual view representation. Um, so it's the same here. Um, so there is a, a view called demo. And that, in this language, corresponds to, um, I think this is just for the, the Maven tooling that they provide. They sort of have a default location which isn't in source main resources. It doesn't go in the class path because it's compiled at build time. So you don't need the templates in at runtime at all. So here's an example. <coughs> so this one is called demo. .jte, they have a default um, you know, file and file name extension. And, and this is what the code looks like, right? So um, you, it's quite intuitive. You can sort of see what's going on. It's, it's Java focused, so it has imports. It's a bit like JSPs, isn't it? I mean, anybody who's used JSPs, uh, there aren't, don't seem to be very many people here who do. They would sort of recognize this, right? So that's saying that um, demo model can be used in, like it can in a Java. Um, source file without the package name. And then I'm using that here to say this whole template requires a parameter of type demo model. So this is how you sort of build, I don't really want to call it type safety, but um, type typed model objects into the template. So that's kind of the strength, I think, of JTE, the way that it does that. And then every time you want to refer to it, you do dollar brackets, a bit like um, spring placeholders, and dot separated um, Java uh, Java accesses. You know, it could be public accesses or public um, bean accesses. And that's basically it. So um, the JTE side of things, the, there isn't any auto configuration for Spring Boot, obviously, for JTE. So you have to um, do your own view resolver, view implementation, and I've got a little configuration file here that would be auto configuration if it ever became part of Spring Boot, basically. It doesn't do very much, it's got two beans. It has a view resolver that translates strings into views, and it's got um, a template engine that helps the view resolver, basically, so it helps with the, um, the mapping. Um, if I was to... I probably don't have to run that, um, the Maven build, because it will already have been run here. But let's have a look, see what happened. Um, so here's the target, right? So this is stuff that has been generated. JTE generated some stuff here. Can you see how it's generated? JTE demo generated dot Java. And that's a sort of naming convention that's built into the tooling. Again, you can change the names, I think. but. That code there is generated at build time by a Maven plugin. You could look at the POM file and you could work out what was going on. It's just a, um, it's a, it's a, a an annotation processor essentially. And that's it. I guess I should just prove that it works, right? Um, it 
doesn't do very much, like I showed you. It's this, this template is just going to say hello, and it's going to print a number. How many visits have you had? So let me just run that and make sure that it works. It, does, it is fast, because the um, templates are all done at a compile time. And then if I load this in the browser, this is what it looks like. You are. Uh, it was <laughs> the, the French is um, from the original sample. It's it's not a, an homage to um, our hosts today. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that that works right. Um, that's JTE. So um, whatever you think about that, that's what it looks like. Then if I was to check out um, the what was the other one I said Rocker. Rocker looks a bit different. Um, so <coughs> there's the application. This one doesn't have any runtime hints, so that tells you something, actually. <laughs> um, the controller's kind of similar. There's the home page. It returns a string. And it sets up a demo model in the model of the model in view in, in Spring MVC terms. It's actually exactly the same controller. Would work. I, I think I've just added an extra step here. I've added a, a special ad model attribute called arguments, but actually I didn't need to do that. It's very similar. Otherwise, you've got some uh, configuration files. You've got a view resolver and a view implementation and some configuration to set that up. And when you run this one, so that one's no longer valid. And when you run this one, you will get some uh, generated Java code here. And I've made this template slightly more interesting. So I could have done exactly the same, but I've made it slightly more interesting just so I can show you something different. This one, um, so one of the features of Rocker is this idea of a, a nested template. So you can have a, a layout, which is common to all your pages. It's very common pattern in the web, right? Um, so this one says every page is going to have HTML with the same head and a title, which is almost the same, but it's parameterized. And then a content body, which is at content. And the content is a special rocker body, which is like a lambda. I'll show you how it's implemented in a minute, and then you'll see what I mean. So I pass in arguments, which are the title and the body that it wants to render. And then um, when th in the demo, there is only one body, and the body is going to be this. And this looks very similar to the JTE example, right? It's got similar syntax. It's at import, at args. The args are of type demo model. And in the demo model, you can do at model.visits instead of dollar brace. So very similar syntax, but not quite the same. And here's that little lambda thing that I was talking about. So the rocker body is actually a lambda written in text. Now, I'm not sure if I like that, but that's, that's the way it works. You can write your lambdas kind of in line in the templates. Um, and then, OK, so that explains why in the generated code there are two Java source files. There's one for the outside template, the layout, and there's one for the nested one. And I'll just demonstrate that it works. So when I run it. All of those, oh, that's um, probably because it's still got stuff lying around from the previous demo. Let me just recompile everything. There we go. Um, and of course, I'm back to visitor number one. So that's the, the other demo, the new demo. So a slightly different layout because the HTML is slightly different, but it's basically the same demo. Um, cool. OK, so those are the two. Um, sort of warm-up acts, if you like. And the last one I want to show you is um, J 
statue. Yes, I suppose I do want to do that. I think I'm actually going to do this again as well. Make sure everything gets rebuilt. Okay, so Joe Statio, um, you can Google it. I'm sure you'll find the, the project. Um, Joe Statio does have Spring Boot auto configuration, so I don't need to write that stuff myself. All I need is the dependency. And it's an APT processor, so I have to make sure that the APT, APT processor is on the path, on the class path, or explicitly known to the compiler. But apart from that, it's very similar. It's very similar to the other two in terms of the, the, I could do the architecture, the build setup. And it also has, like Rocker does, it has um, some natural nesting um, capabilities. And actually, I found out, um, well, building these um, demos and, and some other apps using JStatio, I found out that these nested, nested layouts, those, that, that pattern is actually part of the mustache spec. So there's a spec for mustache. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, I think it came from um, uh, Ruby on Rails and kind of that, that side of the, of the, of the, of the, the tracks. But it's, it, ha it has a JavaScript, it has, it has lots of different implementations, um, mustache. And so this is just one, and they're quite good at keeping to the spec. So the, the existing Java implementation of mustache that we use in Spring Boot, that's called jmustache. That is a subset of the spec. So you can't do everything that you want to do in mustache using the jmustache variant because it's kind of a, a, a dialect. It's a, a subset. And one of the things it doesn't have is this nested layout thing. So um, that the way this looks in uh, standard mustache is like this. So here's my layout. Um, I haven't got anything in the head in this case. I'm just showing a parameterized body. So the body is a parameter of the layout of the template. And I say it's a parameter by using this dollar. It's a special symbol in the spec. And then in index, I say, I want you to be a layout. And I use the um, less than sort of input to drag in the, um, the, the parent template. And then I declare the parameter, the body parameter using the same dollar. So this um, is the body of the index page. And you can see it's the same. It's got a name and it's got a number of visits. So that's mustache. And when it compiles, it compiles to generated code here under, this is the standard APT location for a Maven build. It, it compiles to something called a renderer. <coughs> and so the renderer is, it'll take a while to look at it. I mean, it's, it's generated code, so you never have to read it. But you might as well quickly take a look and see if you understand what's going on. And what you'll find is um, the demo model, uh, actually, it's probably going to be called model dot something, isn't it? So um, let's have a look for it. There we go. No, the model dot class is boring. I wanted to show you an actual <laughs> Java method call. So I, I know there's going to be a. Uh, name, there we go, template name, not that one, no. Uh, <laughs> what moment, what were my parameters? Visits and name, yeah, visits, surely there's a visits in there somewhere. Visits, there we go. So there, you c there there's the generated code for that section of the template, you see, you are visitor number data.visits, there we go. So visits, in this case, I was looking for model and it was called data. Visits is a public long property of the demo model class, right? So it's being referred to um, in the generated code in a very explicit, type-free, compilable, you'll always see a compiler error if you get it wrong kind of way, right? So if I made a mistake in the template, I would get a compiler error. 
it's a build time compilation. Uh, let's just make sure it works. Run it. Oh, so there's a little bit of configuration there. It's probably worth mentioning. So I think this is actually a default for if you're using Spring Boot, but I'm telling it that my templates are in the standard Spring Boot location and they have a dot mustache suffix. Uh, I'm telling it, yeah, it's, there's some standard stuff that comes out of the jar file. I'm telling it I want to see debug logging and I'm telling it that the Java time local date can be formatted, i.e. you can just call two string on it. So that's like, like a, a security feature, if you like. It's a, a white list. I'm saying you can just call two string on local date. It's fine. It's never gonna. Be, it's never gonna blow me up. Um, so there's a little bit of configuration to do there. And there we go. And it's running. And of course, it's going to show me something very similar to the other examples. There we go. Mis mysterious visit in number four. So I kind of like that. Um, I like the fact that it's got spring support. <laughs> I also like the fact that it's mustache, but super mustache, so it's the full spec version of mustache. And uh, if you wanted to see some more complex examples of that, there is one, for instance, um, spring pet clinic. I know Michael probably knows about all about these. Um, the Spring Pet Clinic organization, if you don't know about it, is a community-driven GitHub organization that has different pet clinics. <laughs> so uh, we got tired of people in the Spring Pet Clinic asking for more and more features. So we said, OK, here, look, there's, a, an, org <laughs> there's an org. Go and fill it with stuff. And so if you looked in here, you'll see for instance, a mustache implementation. And that one is using the standard Spring Boot um, J mustache. But there is also a branch of that called J stash, which uses the J stash show. So if you wanted to see a more complex example of that, you could look in there. You can see it's by me. <laughs> no surprise there. <laughs> um, but you will see there, for instance, in the normal templates, uh, mustache templates, and yeah, fragments. So this is showing how you can do things like um, compose a field from reusable components, input fields, and you know form form components that I've written as separate layouts, separate mustache templates. So um, yeah, um, w I guess I'm kind of finished, but there's one last thing I wanted to say, which was to do with um, that native compilation thing. So it turns out that um, definitely JTE needed a bit of help with the native compilation. So although it's build time compilation, it still uses a bit of reflection at runtime. Actually more than anything just to create, find and create the template renderers because it still has this idea that you can turn a string into, um, into, an obj into a view. And actually, if you look at, it's worth looking at the uh, controller. I didn't do that here with JStatio. With JStatio, you could do that, but um, you don't need to. <coughs> so I'm just returning the model right from my controller. And then JStatio, instead of thinking, oh, you give me a string, I need to turn it into a template, it says, oh, you've given me a demo model, and it's annotated with that JStash. I can, so I can look up a, um, a renderer from that. And I don't need to use, it didn't need to use reflection because uh, I can't even remember why. Um, but it, it didn't need to use reflection because it can enumerate them in the same way that Spring can. Um, it's beans. It knows about the beans in, in the Spring in the spring, um, uh, spring context. So it can look them up in the context without using reflection. So there's, there's never any reflection unless you explicitly want it in JStatio. There are ways that you can use it, but it's but the default is not. JT is the opposite. It's, quite reflection-ish when you get down to it. And I would say um, 
Rocker is sort of somewhere in the middle. You, I didn't need any runtime hints. But I don't think that's always the case. I'm, I'm, I just kind of, I kind of remember the details there, but there's, sort of, there's kind of a spectrum there. There's a little bit of reflection uh, needed in JTE and I think also in Rocker, but not in JStatio. So that, I thought that was probably worth mentioning. Um, the, um, all of those projects are quite keen on runtime performance and they think that it speeds things up. They, so they, have, they publish benchmarks where they compare themselves against the runtime compilation templates and they seem to do quite well in those benchmarks. I, I, don't, I don't really know whether to believe benchmarks, honestly, because uh, people are always trying to tell a story with them. But I think there's a good, a good chance that, um, because it's a compile time step, it's a good chance that you'll enjoy using it. And so um, give it a try if you get a chance. And that's, that's it from me. I'm going to hand this microphone over to Josh. Oh. This is the one that um, is being used by the recording. Yeah.